Welcome to our prayer book communion service on this, the 22nd in Trinity. If you have a little bread and wine and would like to use it during the service, and, uh, then please do so at the appropriate po point. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Summary of the Law Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts. We beseech thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. And the colic prayer set for this week. Lord, we beseech thee to keep thy household, the church, in continual good godliness, that through thy protection it may be free from all adversities and devoutly given to serve thee in good works to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our first lesson is from the Epistle to the Philippians, chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ even as it is meet for me to think this of, of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defence and confirmation of the gospel, ye, are, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record. How greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgments, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offence, till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 21st verse. Glory be unto thee, O Lord. Peter said unto Jesus, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee till until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. 
The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their lord all that was done. Then his lord, after the, that all that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldst not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be unto thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. A while ago, a religious debate was discussing forgiveness and punishment. Various people who'd suffered at the hands of others were asked if they could consider forgiving those who had offended them. And after hearing their stories, the programme makers tried to explore how forgiveness might be found and given, alongside proper punishment and restitution. How it might not just be a means of freeing the perpetrators from their guilt, but also the victims from being imprisoned by their anger and their pain. Commentators said then, with a certain cynicism, that for the victims it could be seen as a Christian thing to do to be freed from a lifetime, nourishing a grudge. And then someone said, how could Christians who say the Lord's Prayer, with its request that God should forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us, continue in their faith? The reason why so many find forgiveness difficult is that they don't understand what forgiveness means. They imagine quite wrongly that I forgive you means they're there, just forget about it. What you've done doesn't really matter. Of course it matters. If you've been hurt by someone else's nasty or even thoughtless actions, if you've been betrayed by someone you called a friend, if someone's taken from you something quite precious, it matters all the world, and it can't be easily forgotten, particularly if the person is close to you. Peter asked Jesus about the limits of forgiveness just now. I bet this was a loaded question, 
and he already had someone in his sights, one of the other twelve perhaps, John or Judas, James or Matthew. If one of my friends hurt me, he asks, how many times must I forgive him? Twice? Three times? As many as seven times? Jesus replied, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Can you just imagine it? Poor old Peter trying to keep a score of how many times he's been offended. Sixty-nine, seventy, seven, oh, I've forgotten, I've lost count. Start again. One, two, three. Peter was made to realise that anyone who tries to keep a score of grudges only makes a prisoner and a fool of themselves. Thank God that he doesn't keep a score of how many times we've hurt him. When God says to you and me, I forgive you, he doesn't mean there, there, just forget about it. What you've done doesn't really matter. Our sins matter a lot to God. And forgiveness is costly. It cost him the cross. But our relationship with him matters. He wants it to be a relationship of acceptance and love. That's why God forgives us. Rather like that king in Jesus' story, God expects us to show similar mercy and forgiveness. That's why we must forgive our neighbours, no matter how hard it seems. Today, Peter's question and Jesus' answer says it all for us. If you're still counting how many times you've forgiven someone, then you're not really forgiving them at all. You're simply postponing revenge. Seventy times seven is perhaps a typical bit of Jesus' teasing. What he means, of course, is don't even think about counting. Just do it. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. We thank God for the many blessings of life that we enjoy and we pray for a generosity of spirit that seeks the welfare of others, that offers forgiveness as we have been forgiven. We pray for those who face trouble and hardship in our world because of natural disasters through this pandemic still. We pray for those we know who are ill or in need, particularly those on our hearts today. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and specially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and, de and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them, who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. 
beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly than thy, thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith, this is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Here is O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receive, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take it is in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith, with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. 
We praise Thee, we bless Thee. We worship Thee, we glorify Thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen.